Hi, I'm Dan from Real Mac Software and welcome to this week's Elements Developer Diary. Now for weeks, uh, perhaps even months, I've been saying we're going to show you the local data feature and this week is finally the week. Now I was going to show you some other stuff we've done in Elements but we can't put this off any longer and I really need to demo it to you. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now local data is um, a great way to separate your content from your design and it's super flexible. It's like having a little database local to your website that you can add things to and manage data with. And the possibilities for this are absolutely endless and it's going to be a really powerful feature. So let's dive in. So I've got this website here and very basic website. But what I want to do, we've got these components down the side here and these are, I've got a menu component and a banner component and I've also got this FAQ component. Now we're using this on the element site right now on the live element site. So if you go to realmacsoftware.com forward slash Weaver forward slash elements, you can see this live. Now this component is a little bit special because it uses the data feature. So let's drop this in here. And it looks like any other um, component at the moment. And I can't, um, I can't double click in here. Well, I can, I can double click and edit this title. But these items here are data items. And so what I need to do, I need to open up our little inspector. Whoops, not so little there. Um, and you'll remember this is the inspector we use when we're creating custom components, you know, when you're coding things. Um, and we also store the data collections in here. So. Because this is a um, data component, we've got this little table down here and we can add records to it. So if I hit plus, um, you'll see my placeholder content goes away. We're, we're still working on that to make the um, interface a bit nicer so you guys know that which elements are data components, but the feature works. So um, this is my first item. So this is a great question. So you can see as I'm typing in here, um, it's also adding it up here as well. Um, this is an answer. So we've added our first record and of course I can just click here and add another record. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit so we can see that. And blah, blah. Blah. So I can create as many of these as I like. And these are all um, just records essentially in your uh, in a little local database here. So um, and I, you know, I can create as many options as I like here. Um, let's use we'll just add one more. Let's add one more. Um, so you can see this is a really nice way to work with large data sets. Now this is just an example here of one of the um, components we thought would be really useful because I know when I created the element site, I needed something like this. I needed an FAQ and I didn't want to have to build this up manually because you know, uh, I could have built this up manually out of, um, I could have used a grid or a flex, you know, um, I could have built this up, changed these all to columns and done it like this. Um, but that would have been pretty time consuming and complex where really this is um, the perfect thing for a data set. So let's go and view this in Safari now. And there we are, my, um, my FAQ is there and I can click on this and it expands the answers and hides them like that. And I can add as many things as I want to here. So that's just one, um, one example of a component. We uh, also use it on um, the element site for the feature area. So each one of these features here is um, a component. Let me, so you've got title, description and icon. So I could go through here and add all my features and add a little like on there, you know, and it's the same as the other one. And you can see this is slightly different because I have a title description and an image. Um, so it's really, really flexible, but let's get rid of that. Um, and we'll get rid of this FAQ. 
because this also extends to custom components. So if I go ahead and create a new element and we'll drop this in, um, let's drop that in. So um, you can see I've got my custom HTML component here and you can see there's this collections heading as well. And that means we can create our own um, data tables that we can access in our, in our custom templates. Now before, um, let me just let me just get a snippet of code. Um, we're in Nova. Uh, let me just get this one. And when we're doing custom components, we talked about before. If you haven't, if you don't know about custom components, go and watch the video we did on that a while ago. Um, but if you if you remember that, you you'll remember that in the properties file we can add this little bit of JSON code and we can create our own UI to be used in the template. And that's really cool. So um, all these options you see here, you can create all of these in your own custom components. And that's essentially, you know, it's what we're doing under the hood. So we've given you this power in the custom components. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because these same, this same syntax, this same properties, are used to create your database. So right now I've got my um, my items collection here, and if I add a data set, a data row to this, you'll see it's just got a title, and that's because uh, it uses this uh, code here. And if I paste in this image well code we had have into there and click on the item, you can then see it's now the image well. So each one of my each one of my data, um, each one of my rows would have this UI in it because we're defining it here. So the beauty in this is once you've started building custom elements with and you get used to this syntax, you can then move on and you can use the same syntax in your um, in the data set. So you only kind of need to learn this syntax once. and. Um, in the data items, we have so uh, many different field types available or properties, pretty much everything that's available here, we can add to a data set. So um, if I go in here, let's go back to Nova and um, we can drop in, this is a little snippet here, we can drop in um, a name. So now I've got a first name, let's go back and here, uh, this is a slider, so we'll just add this snippet in. And now we've got an age slider. So um, let's call this guy Dave, and Dave is uh, 61. And let's give him a favorite color as well. Let's add that. So now we can just add a bit more UI. Um, and if I go back on here, then we can set Dave's favorite color to blue. It's a mid blue. And now when I add more items, you can see uh, this is Jenny. Jenny is 30 and her favorite color is orange. So now you can see we've got these data sets here, which is really powerful because then I could um, loop over these in the main UI, just like uh, we're doing in here. I'm looping through the data sets. We could do the same, I could write the same code in here. So it's really powerful and you can build this up any way you want. Um, for me, this kind of reminds me of years and years ago, I used to use FileMaker and I used to love building these uh, little data collections to manage things and list things out. And it kind of reminds me of that and also um, HyperCard as well. If you're really old like me, um, you might remember using HyperCard. And to give um, users the power to do this, this is what I absolutely love because it really puts the power in the user's hands. They can create their own components. They don't have to wait for someone else and they don't, um, you know, it's, if you know a bit of HTML, it's not too hard to get to the point where you can write these properties and we'll have documentation for this and there'll be plenty of examples and you can do it yourself. And that is really, really empowering. So this is, um, so that, well, that is uh, data stores in Elements. But before um, before we wrap up 
and I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. There is, um, I was working on one on and off over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, when I've had time, whoops, uh, for favorite albums. Now, basically I've got a template file here and I got ChatGPT to write some of this, um, just some of this. Uh, we looked at this, I think it was last week maybe, um, or the week before, but we looked at ChatGPT chat gpt and tailwind code and i got it to i wanted to display some favorite albums so i got it to do me the basic outline and then i went in and um tweet the uh tweet these class names and got it kind of looking how i wanted and started playing around from that point so again these custom uh, components it's really powerful and it puts the power in your hands to build the things you want if you know a bit of HTML. So anyway, um, what I wanted to show you, so I've done this. So this is my um, template here, and this is what renders the, uh, what is gonna render the albums out at the top. Um, and what you'll notice is I've got a little each statement here. So each item in albums, which is my collection, we're gonna render this, um, this code here. So there's the end each. So for each one of my records, we're going to elements will go through and render this for each record. So the more albums I add, the more it will just loop through and add them with a little simple if statement there um, with a little each statement. Sorry. So this is really powerful stuff. So let's go ahead and add an album. Now, um, here's my album properties. Very simple. I've got an artist, an album, an artwork. And if I had a record, you'll see there's just a little black wobbly bar there and that's because um, I've got no content in here yet. So if we go ahead and add some content, so I'm gonna add an image and this is Gold Panda, kind of electronic music, very good uh, for the background while I'm working away and I call it Gold Panda the work. And um, if you were looking at this, you might have noticed um, we've got some little some animation in here, a little transition. So, so when I hover on this item, it does this. It shows me the artist and the um, and the album. So let's go ahead and add some more records. Um, I mean, <laughs> these are albums that uh, there was no pun intended there. I meant data records, not records. Uh, so this is Blur, and that's the ballad of Darren. So now I've got two records, let's add one more. Um, what have we got here, Bonobo? And what's that called? That's Fragments. Done, and we'll add one more. Uh, we've got a classic there, Oasis. Who doesn't like that? Definitely, maybe. So I could I could go on and on and on and add all my all my albums here, um, but now we've I've built this up and this is a custom component and I can reuse this throughout the site, tweak it for anything. Um, yeah, and that is uh, that really is the power of local data, custom components and elements. I don't know any other app on the Mac that makes it this easy and this amazing to work with. So if you do know a little bit of HTML, um, then yeah, you'll be able to create these custom components with this, with this really powerful data set in here. And this is a much better way to work because you think if I had to create this manually um, with all these every time I wanted to do a new record, I'd have to um, add another grid item, style it or copy it. And then I've got to manage the design of them. You know, if I want to tweak the design, I'd have to do it all over the place. Whereas if I want to tweak the design here, um, I can do it just in one place and it will do it the same for all of these. Um, so having these data items is a really nice 
way to manage those large uh, collections of data. You know, you might, you could build up a store like this, a storefront, because you could have all your products and then um, a buy button in there and you could put the product ID in there. You know, there's lots of possibilities for this. Um, it's just really endless. So it's really, really good fun. And um, of course, because I because this is all Tailwind and this is the code um, ChatGPT, that's a bit of a mouthful, I never say that correctly, um, gave me. It uses the standard classes. So um, if I look in here, I know this, um, we've got the, the background, the BG gradient, here uh, to top is going from blue to indigo and I've got a blue color here this is um, and I can override this or replace it in the Tailwind CSS file because we did talk about this on the forum we are building Tailwind on the fly so we're only including the classes that you use in your site so it's really efficient uh, and produces really small CSS files but anyway so here's the blue and I could just oops I could just uh, change the color of that. And you can see it changing there. Um, and then what was it going to? Indigo. So if I can find indigo in here, let me make that a custom one. And then I could change indigo. Yes, yeah, so you can see that. I see indigo 900, which is at the end here. So let's change that to indigo 500. There we are. Uh, or maybe we'll go 600, 700. Um, so that's using the color here. So we could go, you know, we could customize however we like. So that's pretty cool. Um, so there we go. So that is local data. Really, really powerful stuff and really exciting to be able to build these things yourself and we will also have a lot more of these components that use local data. Um, and this is just the beginning of our kind of grand vision for this. So, yep, there we are. Ask away in the comments below on the forum and I hope you really like what we've built here. And we are really, really pushing forward towards that alpha now. And hopefully I'll have more to announce on that very soon so you can have a play with this yourself. Alrighty, thank you for watching this demo and I will see you next week. Cheers, bye.